There's a text in the epistle written by Jesus' brother who became a pivotal and integral part of the church in Jerusalem. James was his name. James chapter 4, verse 13. I ask you to meet me there. We're going to consider verses 13 through 17. That's James chapter 4, verses 13 through 17. James writes, now listen, pay attention. You who say today or tomorrow we will go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on business and make money. Why? You don't even know what's going to happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are like a mist, some version of course say vapor, that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Indeed, what you ought to say is, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast and brag, all such boasting is evil. Anyone then who knows the good he ought to do and doesn't do it, Sins. Uh, my thought today has to do with James' words here, of course. Uh, it's in the form of a question. What am I to do since I'm only a vapor? What am I to do since I am only a vapor? Most of the church know this week, uh, my family buried my father-in-law, or eulogized him, I guess I should say. We won't be able to bury him for uh, eight days or so, nine days from here. And every time I have the opportunity, or life brings me to a, a funeral, it's a constant reminder that life is temporary. We hear on the news every day that people pass away. Uh, I was watching a, a YouTube video uh, yesterday. I just kind of sometimes surf when I have nothing to do, which is like really DD when you have nothing to do. And sometimes I have to let my brain, my, my brain rest up. Uh, Mary Wilson, one of the Supremes, she has a YouTube channel. And she posted something on her YouTube channel one day, and she talked about how later that month she was going to post some other stuff, but Miss Wilson died two days later. She didn't get to post whatever she was going to tell her, her fan base. A lot of us can speak to that narrative, how there are people that we saw, and never to think that we would never see them again, whether it's a family member, a friend, or even someone famous. Uh, Scarlett made this shirt because everybody knows that Prince Rogers Nelson is my dude. And one day I was reading the phone and it says, Prince has died. And I thought it was someone in the United Kingdom, one of the princes of the royal family. And I was intrigued, so I clicked on it and it was not one of the royal family. It was rock royalty. It was pop royalty. It was the genius that we call Prince had passed away. He was only in his 50s. My premise is this text that, that we're reading, this, this thought that, that James gives us is not news. This is not the first time that you've heard that life is like a vapor, that life is like a mist. This is not news to anybody here or online. 
We all know that there's an appointment that we all are going to have to keep. Regardless how much we want to miss that appointment, there's a day coming that ready or not, this angel is going to come tap us on our shoulder and separate the spirit from the body that has lived in ever since we were conceived. The body will go back to the ground and the spirit will wait for the Lord to make a decision. What am I supposed to do since I'm but a vapor? Since I'm but a vapor. I'm going to give you a couple of things and then the lesson will be yours. One of the things that we have to do, that we do well to do, since we recognize we are a vapor, is to act like we recognize we are a vapor. A lot of times, Sister Linda, we live life on accident. You see what I'm saying? We, we live it on accident. You know, an accident is what happens when you're driving down the road and someone who's doing something they're not supposed to do or come into your lane and you'll have a, 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 an accident. It was not planned. Life is not supposed to be lived in that way. We're not supposed, as, as Christian people, we're not supposed to live our lives on accident. Brother Stevie, we're supposed to live our lives on purpose. Because we recognize that we are temporary. Just like when we clock in, we recognize no matter how long this day is, no matter how, how much these folk getting on my last nerve, I got about five hours and two minutes left. Come on, Holy Spirit, help me up in here. We recognize that no matter how hard it gets, eventually that last minute is going to tick and we're going to be able to leave and go home to somebody that actually loves us and actually wants us around. Life is like that time clock. We don't know when that last minute is. We just know that that last minute is coming. So since we know that that last minute is coming, we should live our lives on purpose, especially as Christians. We have a responsibility to God. And if we have a responsibility to God, we cannot facilitate that responsibility on accident. We have to facilitate it on purpose. That means the decisions that we make are purposeful decisions. This is what changes. What, what do you mean? Talking about what you're going to do tomorrow. You're not promised to be here tomorrow, James says. You know, you, you got a nice retirement that you're planning. I have a co-worker who's no longer with us. Third is seniority on the list. He started at UPS a couple years after I was born. Literally. Had the time to retire. But he didn't because he was handling some business. And then one weekend, the Lord took him home. All that retirement. He never got to experience because he died before he got to ever collect a check. Nobody knows when that day is coming. That day is coming. So regardless how much we, we, we plan for retirement or plan to kick it when we're, we're done down here and we, we, we've done all the work we're going to do, we got money stacked. You know what happens to a lot of money we stack? My kids spend it, Jesus, because we die. <laughs> Lord have mercy. And, and they didn't work for it, so they ain't going to appreciate it like you and I. Right. You feeling me? Right. They just go through it and then wonder, well, anyway, that's a whole other circle. My premise is, James tells his audience, don't go around talking about what you're going to do because tomorrow's not promised. Right. We have to recognize the same thing. You and I are like a vapor. We are nothing but a mist. We are vapor. But what am I supposed to do since I am a vapor? Brother Steve, I have to live life on purpose. I have to live life on purpose. I have to consider before I leave here, what do I want to accomplish? When my daughters were growing up, especially the oldest one, I told her, in your lifetime, you're not going to accomplish everything you want to. I told her that because she was just kind of this ingenuity person. When you give to Monica five minutes, she could think about 10,000 things that she might want to do. So I'm like, focus on the important ones. Focus on the important ones and then do those. And I'm telling the church today, as followers of Jesus, we do well to focus on the important ones. What is it in your life that's most important? And then focus on those things. See, a lot of times we fool ourselves, especially as Christian people. We, 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 we talk good game now. We talk good game. I, I love the Lord. I love Jesus. I, I love him. I, I, I love him so much. And then we don't spend any time with him. But I love him. I love him now. I don't take time to listen to the word to see what he has to say 
in my daily life, but I love him. If that's love, hey, I don't really need you to love me. Just be infatuated and we'll keep it moving. Because because love doesn't act that way. My premise is, if we're going to truly live this out, remember the words of Jesus. Whatsoever a man purposes in his heart, so is he. Where a man's heart is, that's where you will find his treasure. So when we start talking about what's important to us in life, in that same important place, we will find our treasure. That's where our heart is. My premise is we will make time for the stuff that is important to us. That's not Coleman. That's Christ. Jesus said where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. Don't talk to God about how important he is to you and if you have no time for him. That's not the way it works. The things we are interested in, that's where we spend our time. I get it. There's a lot in life to juggle. I, I promise you I get it. Anybody who knows me knows I get it. But there are certain things in life that prioritize that says, I might not get around to this, but I'm going to do that. You understand what I'm saying? I might not get around to watch the television, but I'm going to study my Bible. I might not get, a, get around to Facebook, but I'm going to study my Bible. I might not get around to, to working at extra overtime, but I'm going to spend time with my God. You see what I'm getting at? We have to live on purpose because all that other stuff that we get wrapped up in, is God really going to be impressed? Because I'm a vapor, what am I supposed to do? Another thing, we have to recognize who's in charge. Not only is it the mindset that I live on purpose, I have to recognize who's in charge of my life. There's a God in heaven that sits high and looks low. And, and I really, you know, I was thinking, you know, sometimes when you preach in a sermon, it's good to have visual aids. And I'm like, man, if I had a mister, I could really do that break. So just pretend, church, I got a mister right here. You know, some of y'all have it in the houses. You come to your house, you're smelling it up and everything with all that good stuff because you got this mister. Or when kids, when babies, you had to dehumidifier or, no, the humidifier. Anyway, y'all talking about. So, <laughs> pretend I have a, 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 a humidifier. This vapor, it comes and it fades. Anyone who had a kid who had a humidifier remembers that little machine. Linda, what would happen if you unplugged the machine? What would happen to the vapor? It'll go away. We have to understand that we're not the machine. We're not the one that powers the machine. We're the vapor. The one that controls the machine and the electricity, if you will, is the Lord. So in other words, this vapor that we are, we don't get to decide when this vapor stops vaping. So we have to live recognizing that I don't know when my last day is going to be. There's someone else who's in charge of that part of the situation. Just like I had nothing to do with my conception, it stands to reason, prayerfully, I'm not going to have anything to do with my termination. But it's going to happen. Again, this is what James is getting at. Ask God, say, if the Lord's will, I'm going to do this. If it's the Lord's will, I'm going to do that. We can't walk around as if tomorrow is promised. Oh, yeah, I'm going to do this. Oh, yeah, I'm going to do that. No, ma'am. No, sir. James says your mindset is skewed. You act as if you're the one that gives yourself the authority to do what you do. You're not the one in charge of anything. A lot of times we're guilty of running nothing but our mouths. God is the one in charge. God is the one that decides this thing. You might remember the, the parable of the man who, who had riches. And he, he had so much going on that he decided that he didn't have enough storage space for what he had. So he says, you know, I'm going to build some bigger storage spaces. You know, I, I got it going on. And, 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 and God says, this day, not tomorrow, not next week, but tonight, I'm going to come for you. I'm going to kill you. I'm, you're going to die this day. So let me ask you, all this stuff that you're planning 
Who's going to do it then? Because this day is your last day. We don't know when God is going to make that decision that this day is our last day. So it stands to reason because we're vapor. She live a certain way. Uh, Y'all get what I'm trying to say? We take life for granted. And what I mean by that is we act as if just because we go to sleep tonight, we're going to wake up tomorrow. And, and I get it. I'm 48 years old. I've woken up every day of my life. <laughs> and you have too. But there's going to come a day. But you're, not, you're going to wake up. But you're not going to go to sleep. There's going to come a day that your eyes open. You're going to go through the day. But sometime during that day, your eyes are going to close in bed. That day is coming. And Jesus teaches, live every day like it's our what? Last day. Because one of these days is your last day. Uh, as, as I wrap this up, since I'm only a vapor, what am I supposed to do? On a tombstone, there's this dash. And that dash is in between two numbers. Now, I don't know what my second number is going to be. The first one is 1973. The last number is to be determined or to be understood. It's already been determined. God knows when that day is, that year it is. My premise is this. What do you want your dash to look like? Consider that question and then live accordingly. Interesting thing about vapors, they don't just fade. They tend to go through a change before they fade. And as I've thought of this text often, what James is telling this audience, I've thought about that. Life is like a vapor. Not only does eventually the vapor totally go away, but life changes like that vapor. There was a time when I was 12 and 20 and 30, 35 and 42. That part of my vapor is gone. I look at my adult daughters at 25, 26, and 28, and I see their pictures, you know, at their funerals, they a lot of times they cascade pictures. I'm looking at my little girls. I'm like, my God, where did time go? And I can remember when they was young and so at the church, Brother Colton, they grow up fast. I'm like, I wish they'd hurry up. <laughs> and you know what happened? They grew up fast. And I would give anything to hug one of my little girls. You know, me and Monica had this discussion. And, Daddy, I'm still your mm -hmm. You too old, move, keep moving. You know, and I think that's why when you get a certain age, you start wanting grandchildren. Because you want to hug a baby again, not this 200-pound person. <laughs> Boo! My premise is, even though they're still alive, my little girls are gone. They're gone. My daughters live, but my babies are gone. And I get it, because I tell women all the time, because y'all use that word loosely. That's my baby. He's 39 with eight kids. Stop it. Just stop it. Men don't have that mentality. We let you grow up. My babies are gone. And I promise you I wish I could hold one up. As if they were little girls. But the vapor has changed. Never to come back again. And one day. It's very possible that those three are going to have to lay me and their mama in a box because our vapor and our burnout. It is because I recognize I am only a vapor that I'm on my grind. Because I want my dash to say something about my faith 
and I want my dash to say something about my God and my, my belief. I want my dash to speak to the narrative of what was important in my life. I've tooled my oldest with the responsibility to eulogize me. Assuming she's alive, she don't have a choice. Y'all make sure Monica does a good job. My premise is, I'm saying that to say, I want her, I, I want to give her my eulogy. And what I mean is, I don't need Monica to figure anything out, just tell the story that she heard me tell, tell the story about what her daddy did and who her daddy was. If we live a life a certain way, especially as Christian people, eulogies actually are not that bad. Because you get to tell a wonderful story about a person of faith who lived and now rests in the presence of God. Since I'm only a vapor, how am I supposed to live? We live like we recognize the temporary. We live like we recognize that God is the one that makes the decision. We live because we want to give that dash a meaning. That eulogist, whoever stands in that pulpit when our body is stretched out in front of the church, we want to give him or her something to say. And church, if we live that way, I, I believe to my heart there's going to be a vapor that was worth it. Y'all in here with me today? Let's pray. Uh, Father, we're thankful for this opportunity that you give us Consider the word and consider what James told his audience all those years ago. And to personalize it even in 2022. Recognizing that life is short. Recognizing that we're called by your Holy Spirit to live with the mentality that life is short. To live on purpose and not on accident, God. To live recognizing you're the one that gets the final call when this life is over. To live God in a way that says we want that dash to mean something. To live God giving our eulogist something to talk about. If, Holy Father, by your grace and by your mercy, by your guidance, by your wisdom, by your discernment and by your strength, we're able to live in such a way we believe by faith that it will be pleasing before your sight. Not because of works righteousness, God, but because we would have allowed the Holy Spirit to sanctify us into the image of he who justified us all to your glory. Today, God, is the first day of the rest of our lives. We can't change yesterday. But we can do something about tomorrow. Especially if we couple up with you and allow you to have your way in our lives. We live in a hurting world. We live in a divided world. And if the church is not going to be the salt and the light that Jesus has called us to be, then what a hopeless and woeful existence this world will exist in. Oh, we know the devil is busy. But as your people, should we not be more busy? As your children, should we not be more dutiful? We just ask you, God, to help us right there. So we can be what you called us to be. And live a life that you called us to live. A life that was paid for by the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. How 
Akin namin Hindi ko dati Jesus Oh Jesus Oh Jesus Kaya ko sa 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 Kaya 